We are now live. It is Wednesday, hump day. Yes, we are getting ready for the BYOQ on Friday. The BYOQ, bring your own questions. That's right, training on Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. BYOQ, bring your own questions. It's your turn to ask me the questions, my turn to answer them. Looking good, Jakey Bakey. Sounding great, Jakey Bakey. Looking awesome today, everybody. So excited. Got a lot of energy going. Got a lot of people we want to come on live. Uh, thank you so much, Allison. I appreciate you coming on. Team Meltzer, where are you? Uncle David is in the house. Colt, thank you, John. Welcome, welcome. Let me know where you're coming in from. Let me know your biggest takeaway from last week's training. BYOQ, this Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Looking for Team Meltzer to post up 949-298-2905 and david at dmeltzer.com. I uh, always wonder why Team Meltzer is late to the game. We got to make sure you're only as good as your team. You know, you could be as great as you want, but you're only as good as your team. And the ball is always going to find the weakest player. All right. So you got to work with everyone in those values, making sure that we all as a team are forgiving, accountable, gracious, and inspired. How to, you know, hold on. How to deal with team members who aren't as invested as you are? Well, first of all, that's going to be an everyday occurrence an everyday occurrence, and there's something called pay. So you pay the people that feed you, you feed the people that feed you, and you don't pay the people that bleed you. And you allow them to figure it out, right? But on every single, from family to business to sports, there is going to be a hierarchy of those who care more than other people. That's why there's somebody that's the first one there and the last one to leave, right? It's very obvious. It's not hard to find out. And you pay the people that feed you. You feed them. And you get rid of the people that bleed you or you allow them to fall away or you allow them to maintain mediocrity within the context as long as they're aligned with your values and they're pursuing their potential, maybe at a slower pace. Right? Maybe they have a lot of issues getting in their way. A lot of different variables. But yes, you invest more in the people that are investing in what you want. And integrity is very important. Right? Integrity is important. You know, just because you come clean doesn't mean it's the truth. Right? Doesn't mean it's the truth. Oh, you know what? I forgot to tell you this. No, no, no. We're all on the same page. We have to, number one, Number one, credibility, credibility. You oversell, back end sell, lie, cheat, manipulate. Think about it. Now I'm looking, I'm looking for the people that lie, manipulate, cheat. I'm looking at the things you do well for where you're lying, cheating, and manipulating. That's why we got to work on our credibility all the time. And we have to illuminate when we make mistakes. And we have to say, hey, just be honest. You know what? I did tell you this, right? I don't have bad intentions, but I should have told you this. That's what I'm talking about. All right, training. David at dmelcher.com gets a free book, my free guides, free training, right? I'm BYOQ. We're going to do BYOQ every single month. Bring your own questions. And I'm also going to launch the two-minute drill. Uh, two-minute drill is going to be a pitch competition, and you're going to win free coaching from me. Uh, we're going to do it once a month, have a pitch competition, two-minute drill, two-minute pitch and then three-minute uh, feedback from me, and the winner is going to get free training from me one-on-one. -on -one. That's right. We're going to make it happen. We're going to build your business together. What are your thoughts on starting a new business opportunity during this episode? Excellent. This is the best time to start a business, right? Margins of millionaires are made during these times. Great businesses were built in 2008, all the way back to the Depression. When there's disruption, this is the best time to build that business. I'm looking, uh, is Raleigh here? Must love sports. My Wasserman group, are they in the house? Who has their questions ready for Friday? BYOQ, that's right, on Friday. Oh, wow, they loaded up questions already today. <laughs> that's awesome. What's the best advice you received? You don't know what you don't know. Three simple words. You don't know what you don't know. Best advice is to be radically humble, uh, you know, to literally be radically humble. So, you know, it, it is what it is. Best advice uh, I give myself still today. I don't know. I don't know. Um, let's see here. We'll get, grab somebody live. There we go. My friend Rob here to join us. 
We you may know what Wasserman is. This is our director of athlete exchange at Wasserman. Must love sports. He's the founder, genius idea. Is she? <laughs> All right. Hey, Dr. hey, that works. I'll take it. I whatever. love. I, How I, are I, you, David? I'm talking Can you about, hear me okay? Uh, illuminating, and I'm sitting here going, "He's a good friend of mine," and she shows up. So there, there you go. Welcome to the world of hey. honesty. Yeah. All sorts of friends. Thank you so much for joining <laughs> me. It's so amazing. Good. Of course. Thanks for having so you, me. So um, you are doing something that I've dreamed about doing ever since I was a sports agent years and years ago at Lee Steinberg. We, we had the ISX. We, we tried different things. But to have, you know, this athletes exchange where we can really leverage what I say, uh, a change agent. So, you know, Wasserman's not just in the sports agency or entertainment agency. It's really a change agency now. And the Athletes Exchange is proof of, of how we do that. Um, can you give us a little background on, on I know you're breaking up a little bit, Raleigh, sorry. <laughs> oh, can you hear me now? Me I saw this with James Carvel yeah. on, uh, just, yeah. on a TV show. It happens to the best of us. Up oh, there. You can hear me? Can you guys see me? Yeah, we're good. Can you see her? She's uh, kind of glitching out. Ah, we're glitching on my side. Um, do me a favor, Raleigh. Can you log back in real quick? I, I would love to do that. I'm going to share the link, of course. Um, let's log I want to really want to talk to Raleigh. So um, they are empowering leaders of tomorrow to make a difference today. Uh, it's an extraordinary... Uh, exchange, which I think is the key Bud Light approach that I take to uh, sports and entertainment to use the celebrities, athletes and entertainment, uh, entertainers in order to figure out how we can create change and no better time to do that than now. Let me uh, see if we can have her join one more time. Um, there we go. All right. We log back in here. Sorry, Raleigh's going to come back in. Let me know when. I'll answer a quick question while we wait. Sorry about that, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Can you break down how you figure out your experiential values? Yeah, through being a student in my calendar, I figure out what I want to experience during the day, what I have planned, what I don't have planned in my sleep. That's as simple as it is. It is. I do apply it to my personal giving and receiving values, but in order to effectuate daily taking inventory of my values. The experiential values are directly related to being a student of your calendar, studying what you're going to do in person on the phone. Here we go. We're going to try it one more time. Raleigh's coming on. I apologize, everyone. We have something called the internet. And uh, there we go. Much better. Yeah. Any better? Let me know. We're beautiful. Okay. So <laughs> I've got the backup and the other backups if we need it. Well, I'm just, I'm so excited <laughs> because I've always taken a bug light approach to athletes. I think that the greatest use of an athlete, a celebrity, or an entertainer is the impact that they can have, this change that they can have, but also the support that we can give them because like everybody and everything else in the world, we have our core competency, we have our quantum memories but we all have places that we need help. We may be super strong in one area, but we all need help in another. And I think the Athlete Exchange at Wasserman is a classic example of how we can really look for the superpowers in ourselves and others and amalgamate or aggregate them for the greater good. Can you give me a, a little bit of background on how you created it and what's the main empowerment intention of the exchange? Yeah, sure. And I certainly didn't create it. Um, and there's a lot of you know things we can talk about today. But um, that part of the business, uh, the athlete change part of the business is something you see a lot of people doing, but not necessarily from the sense of the athlete brand should come first. Right. Um, and that's what we do is we make sure that anything we create is in consultation with usually driven by and started in conversation with the athlete. So it all comes out from their channels and their handles and is entirely driven by them with our support, as you mentioned, with our expertise in the digital space or content creation, um, which, by the way, they're great at a lot of things, but maybe not necessarily editing a video or something <laughs> like that. And that's what we bring to the table in terms of helping them share their stories, which are so important. And that led you to have the opportunity to found the Must Love Sports, though. 
Is that correct? Yes. So I started Must Love Sports a, a while ago um, in 2012 when I was at Twitter, um, effectively as a networking opportunity. And I work with athletes, but primarily this summer, what we're doing is supporting those students who didn't have an opportunity to have an internship. So we propped up an alternative internship um, for 10 weeks. We've got about 260 students in the core program, and they're hearing from folks like my boss, Casey Wasserman. Um, they're hearing from today, they'll hear from the co-founder and president of DraftKings. Um, and really they're learning about anything that intersects the business. So media, technology, and sports. But then beyond that, they're learning just lessons that hopefully they would have learned if they had been in an office this summer. Of course, we can't duplicate that experience, but we're doing our best. That's awesome. And I know you guys have had an incredible internship program over the years as I had at Lee's and as we have at Sports One Marketing. And we're blessed to have our program going this summer as well. Not quite, you know, 250 people, but I was curious, you know, it's always interesting uh, for doing this over 20 years, you know, how kids change. And, you know, I did a training last week on toughness and telephone because uh, from my experience of working with a lot of the kids is that I want them to be tougher and I want them to learn how to use a telephone. I, you know, I'm an old school sports agent and I get that, I, you know, I get the context in which they use it, but I think there's a lot of power and a, and a lot of opportunity by calling people. And I think, you know, I was CEO of the world's first smartphone in 1999. That's how old I am. That was pre Lee Steinberg. And I still used to tell people when I created what was called the convergence device, it was a Windows C device. I said, this is not a telephone. I said, a telephone is for speaking. I go, this is converging all this stuff. And someday you'll be able to search things and have GPS and Bluetooth. But today I would prefer to have a tiny little flip phone uh, <laughs> that we had super high quality so that we're not glitching out when we're talking to each other, right? <laughs> and so what, what, are some of the yeah. trends, <laughs> what, what are some of the trends that you see, which would be really valuable for everyone of, you know, lessons that you feel the interns this summer should really learn or focus in on in order to empower them for the future? Yeah, you know, I think that's a great one, by the way, being able to pick up the phone and have a conversation in this world where we have Zoom and Instagram Live fatigue, you know, there's just so much noise, being able to just connect one on one is so important. So obviously, um, you're spot on. We talk about a rule where I won't use the exact word, we'll use the word jerk. Uh, but we talk about the don't be a jerk rule. This industry sports is small, every industry becomes small. Um, and if you yourself are a good person and you're just trying to do quality work and you treat everyone as a human that they are and they may have bad days or good days, et cetera, just be a good person. Don't be a jerk. And you can achieve a lot. Um, so that's that's a lot of what we're talking about. You know, we're talking about the whole summer of making lemonade because you've been dealt a whole bunch of lemons in this situation, but so has everyone. So the positivity or what they're bringing to the table, um, and I've seen some of them commenting, which is great, um, has been awesome um, just because they could be very negative about the situation. So don't be a jerk, be positive, and certainly provide solutions are kind of what our core things are to talk about, but obviously it can go a million different directions and we're getting amazing advice from our leaders that are coming on. Um, and obviously they're, they're looking to you as one of those as well. Oh yeah, I would love, I'd love to come on too if you have an opportunity. I'd love to talk about being kind, be being kind to your future self, toughness and telephone, and then finding the light, love and lessons and everything that pains an indicator that you have a lesson to learn. So if you want me on there, just give Jakey Bakey a call because we'd love to, we'd love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Jake's the man. I'm familiar. Well, well done. And I see the Chargers gear there. We had a lovely gentleman talk about be kind. Um, Tom Telesco uh, yeah. jumped on and emailed me directly through our form, right? He saw the form, didn't even, you know, think twice about it and said, I want to participate. How can I do it? And this is a man who's got a lot going on, right? But he took the time because he himself was an intern, worked his way up through an organization, and now is where he is. Um, so, you know, just a great example of, of good people and the Chargers organization, as I see your, your lightning bolt. Yeah. So, Got to give some shout suffering, outs. suffering fan <laughs> still. And then just uh, ho hoping that I, I have my new podcast studio and office at the new stadium and uh, for both teams, but I'm partial to this theme here and grew up in San Diego. Um, it's interesting because my, one of the other things, 
growing up in the industry with Casey uh, and Lee and, you know, what they call now, I'm old enough where they call you a legend, right? That's just an insult. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, no, call me a legend. it's a like great 90. comment. And I'm going to be a legend when I'm 90, not Please. It, it's I'd like, rather they, be uh, a legend starting at what, 21? Is it 21? <laughs> 22. I'm sorry. But, Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, but the cool, the cool thing is about being a little bit older and having, you know, over 20 years of intern program and with Wasserman the same way. And there's some other companies as well, as you know, but I love seeing kids that were interning for you or interning for me and they're presidents of teams, right? They're in their, they're, they're the 40 under 40s. You know, it, it's like my heart sings. It's, it's like I tell my wife, I go, it's like being able to have my kids all grown up and you sit there and it's, you know, the, the, the head of the Tiger Woods Foundation or a president or GM of a team or, you know, on ESPN. And you were like, this was this scared little kid that barely spoke up. And we empowered him with gratitude and forgiveness and accountability and taught him about inspiration and taught him to be kind to his future self and herself, by the way. And bam, here I am old enough to see, you know, these people are calling me going, oh, my God, what can I do for you? And it's just, I think the right. biggest, biggest, uh, best experience that I've, I've had in my whole career. What, can you share with me one of your guys' success stories? I know you've had so many great interns. Is there one that you can share from your program? You know, so our program is relatively, at least the Wasserman program has been going on forever. This piece yeah. that Wasserman has empowered me to, to support um, obviously rose out of the, the problem that was um, COVID eliminating amazing ones. But I will tell a story and he'll, he'll shout me out, I'm sure, if he's listening. <laughs> but um, I've started my career at ESPN um, and I couldn't agree with you more, by the way. The biggest compliment is for someone to go off into the world and say, oh, you helped me there or, hey, this person used to work there and therefore I know they are great, right? That's the, that's the coolest thing in the world. But uh, I worked at ESPN and I quickly learned having been a history major that I definitely needed more business acumen. So I applied to business school and had, had an intern from the summer prior called him and said, hey, I'm going to business school. This job will be available. You were a great intern, hop on it. Like give these people a call, let them know. Um, flash forward, to working at Twitter, he then joined me there at Twitter and we joke, hey, when are you coming to Washington? When are you doing whatever? He's very happy at Twitter and he's absolutely crushing it. Um, I was at his wedding, he was at mine, but it's a great story of just, you know, somebody who's awesome, didn't need me at all, but now our careers are connected inherently because we're kind to each other. As you said, you know, we're always connecting and staying uh, in touch and learning about each other's business, but inevitably, we've got that sort of pull each other along um, and I can call him, he can call me, et cetera. So that's one of my favorite sort of stories. But what I'm excited about for the, the folks this summer is they have been so positive that they are reaching out. They're creating what we call their squads. They're making sure um, to work, to get to know people before they need those people. Right. This yeah. is the first time I've asked a lot of my network for anything because they're just friends and they're colleagues and I learn from them. They're, much smarter than I am. It's like you and Jake, you know, I'm going <laughs> to learn from you guys all the time. Um, but the best thing about it is now when I do say, Hey, I really, I need a favor. They're happy to do it because our relationship is built on so much more than a give and take um, at any given time. So just a couple examples there that have been really well, fun. I know that you're extremely good at asking how you could be of service or value to others. And that's why you are successful because yeah. you're kind to your future self. But I'm gonna teach you one last question as I go to the next person. You got to make sure these kids are asking this question and you ask it as well. Do you know anyone that can help me? People are afraid to ask for help. And if I can teach one question and I will bring it up when I, when I share hopefully my experiences with Wasserman and in your group. But if you can teach these kids just we want to help everybody out. They, they want, they may not always have the time to help or the resources to help, but it's a numbers game. The more people you ask, do you know anyone that could help me? It includes them. I promise you their careers will escalate. You and I both know that our careers are built on asking of how we could be of value and service. And the one regret I have, the one thing they say, I wish I would have asked for more help when I was young. I could have accelerated my career even more by leveraging all those people who wanted to invest in me and wanted to help me so we can share that great experience of their success by elevating others. And I appreciate you for elevating so many others. I look forward to helping however I can with your program and we'll have you back on. Thank you so Thank much. You. Robert. 
I appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. See you soon. You too. Bye -bye. Thank you. What a blessing. What a blessing. Must love sports. Of course, the Athlete Exchange at Wasserman, Senior Director, Raleigh Gray. Go ahead, look them up. Maybe they'll be doing it next summer if we're back into uh, a situation. But you cannot find a better place or better people to learn with than uh, Raleigh and Casey and the cool, whole crew over there at Wasserman. They're just really, really beautiful people uh, with a great vision. And we've been blessed to have Boris and Lee and Bruce Tolner and, you know, all the greats in here um, and CAA. Uh, the great Allison McGregor and Brian Schur must love sports. Just another leader in a space to empower others, to empower others. All right, let's jump on. Colleen, good morning. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate you. Awesome. Uh, let's see here. How is the best way to apologize to someone you hurt? First, you got to forgive yourself. Before anyone's going to forgive you, you got to forgive yourself. Look for the lesson of what you did to attract it to yourself and the lesson that you're supposed to learn. And go articulate to the person what you did and the lesson that you've learned. Best way that you can apologize. Uh, you don't have to ask for forgiveness. Forgive yourself. Uh, and looking, of course, Stephen here. Let's get another quick question in. Thank you very much for all the questions. Don't forget, BYOQ. That's right, Blaine, BYOQ. Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join me. Bring your own questions. I'll bring the answers. Hopefully, you'll like them. And if not, you'll have something to go against. Perfect. 11 a.m. Pacific. Text me, 949-298-2905 if you want a free book, free guides, or free training. Text me, free, free, free. Or email me, david at dmelzer.com. david at dmelzer.com. Go ahead. Register. Get a free book. Get from free training, free guides. It's all free. What is the most important question you have asked yourself? Most important question I've asked myself. What did I do to attract this to myself? Right? And, and looking for that lesson. So uh, being accountable is the best question I can ask. If I can figure out and raise my awareness of how things are attracted to me, um, then I'm going to be there. Let's see here. Uh, Stevie, my man. Let's go live with Stevie. Stephen Benedict, professional track athlete, but more importantly, the founder of the Fostering Success PM and Empowering Movement. There he is. You look thrilled going? to be here, my friend. What's going on? How's everything? It's fired up this morning. How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm great. I'm great. Um, it's a pleasure to be on with you guys. I look forward to hearing from you. And, uh, you know, this is Alex set this up, and I'm just really looking forward to talking to you a bit. Well, you have, you know, such a great mission. I'm on a mission to empower over a billion people to be happy via finding a thousand people like you that I know are already empowering a thousand to empower a thousand, especially when you're working with so many kids. And when we're working with, you know, fostering kids and, and helping kids, the amazing thing is it's such a subtlety of success. One little change, you know, Jerome Bettis has uh, a, a project where we're giving laptops to kids. And, and people are like, you know, what impact does that have? Well, I know some really intelligent kids that want to go to school, want to be extraordinary people. And one little subtlety that they don't have a computer now to be able to, you know, impact themselves with education because there's no school. Oh, my God, they could end up in, in an incredible place. So how did you get involved in founding uh, the Fostering Success Program and movement that you're in? Um, you know, that's a great question. And it, it, it basically came to me about like two years ago, I was coming back from Italy, and I was training in Italy and competing over there. And when I came back, I sat down with my managers. And I, I said that I really wanted to do something that was obviously bigger than myself, but stayed in alignment with who I was, the core qualities of who I was, the values of who I was. And uh, so basically, you know, I came up with this project and, and this nonprofit that it's called Fostering Success. And there's two entities to it. There's, you know, what I've brought into is the elite athlete side of who I am and also the foster child side of who I am. Because I was raised in and out of foster homes for six years with my younger brother. And so I married those two together. And what, what I've done, I've taken the approach to nonprofit in a different way. You know, I've been to so many nonprofit dinners, such as I'm sure as you have as well, charity dinners. And there's always that, that aspect, that atmosphere of knowing that you're going to get asked for some type of support, some type of money and, and, and anything at that, at some stage in the, in the game. And I really wanted to take that key 
point out and really focus on what the essence of the project was and and it didn't get taken away so there's two entities to it one uh, i build a tangible aspect to it that people know that they're actually contributing and being part of something and that is a documentary book so i bring elite athletes and celebrities together and we shoot documentaries with foster kids um every day it's a different athlete different uh kid with a different story marry them to their together 15 female athletes 15 male athletes and they spend their day together they interact they conform they build that bond together the kids get that outlet which is very valuable to them you know especially coming from foster care they don't really have that outlet and they're they're looking for outlets to to grow and and to you know to just have you know an expanded vision of what life is supposed to be so that's one piece and then we'll have a gala dinner but um there won't be any type of silent auction or anything like that and then ultimately the proceeds to everything ultimately i want to build out a a foster home that is impacted by sports so very cool so you know your foundation is built on the three c's right compassion consistency um and connection i always believe that you know struggles when we're children especially build who we are you know i didn't have nearly the talent that you had but the closest to my potential was to be an average division three football player for me but a lot of what i really delved into was i grew up poor with a single mom and what i saw at the time what people look back on and said it was such a struggle like i rejoice in the fact and am jealous the fact that i can't teach my kids what i learned you know, when I wasn't sure if I was going to eat or not, you know, or whatever it is. Wayne, Dyer, Dr. Wayne Dyer is one of my mentors. Um, you know, I still read his stuff every day, The Power of Intention, especially. Grew up as a foster child as well. What lessons of connection, compassion, um, and consistency did you learn from being a foster child yourself? Well, I think, you know, th there was a lot that I learned early and obviously later in the game um, I'm still dealing with a lot of that stuff and, and and working through that stuff it's a lifelong process I think it is for everybody uh, but you know first and foremost you know I, I definitely learned the fact of um, when I was adopted my my childhood was very accelerated I had a younger brother we were in very unstable situations but the first thing that I learned was having to protect and provide for him you know, um, at such a young age, you know, I have a lot, I've absorbed a lot of the experience and a lot of what had went on and um, the outside circumstances of things to protect him from, from that. So I have a lot of the memories he doesn't. Uh, but when we were, when we were adopted, the first thing that of acceptance was my adopted parents. You know, my mother was a school teacher, a second grade school teacher. My father was ex Vietnam and worked for Merrill Lynch. Uh, but the acceptance that they gave us immediately into the family and not just, not just by them, but by the, in the family as an entirety whole was, um, was, it was so welcoming and so heartwarming was it, it took us a second to step back and be like, was, is this real? You know, because we're so used to abandonment. We're so used to not having things real. So that was, a, that was a huge thing for us. And it, that opened up the doors for us to be exposed to a whole new realm of life, a whole new outlook of life of being exposed to sports and music and education um, and just travel and what family really was at the core. And I think that's really important for, for children, especially nowadays. Um, exposure is such an important thing, uh, exposure to, to diversity, um, and everything across the board, you know, because we have so many things. Kids are growing up so so fast right now. It's just, um, you know, that exposure factor is is an educational piece that needs to be in the foundation of things. Yeah, but that ac accountability and responsibility and liability that you had at such a young age, when you talk about kids growing up quickly because of the amount of content and exposure and awareness they have to certain things, you live that, right? You, especially as the older sibling, you really live that side of things, that, that, that lesson to be able to share and then to empower other people to help kids that they don't have to necessarily struggle as much as you. Now, one of the things as an Olympic athlete, I, I sit on the Olympic board here in the US uh, and 
obviously with the games being put off an entire year, your perspective of that probably is different than most because you've had significant accelerated change in your life. You've had uh, literally, you know, the threat of existence, which I think is one of the, the main thing that scares so many people is most people don't ever have to contemplate their existence. Right now, the entire world in a matter of a week, all of a sudden was contemplating their existence. You've done that before and probably for more than a few weeks. Um, how has that uh, mindset and heart set allowed you to understand and prepare for what has been a really significant blow to a lot of Olympic athletes? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, you know, I think the some of the biggest things that I've had to learn was one is patience. You know, I think patience is, is a huge factor in anything in life. And, and that's been a buildup for me, to be honest. You know, I'm, I'm a very, like, patience has not always been my strongest attribute, but it's definitely it's definitely been there the whole time. And then also resilience, you know, um, just being able to push through the factors and, and being able to uh, really be in the moment of where I am currently and say, I'm exactly where I need to be at the right time and everything else will fall into place. As long as I stay true to my core values, I keep putting in the work and, you know, just let God do whatever he's going to do at this time. You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just living his story right now. So <laughs> yeah, when you talk about letting God do whatever he's going to do right now, as you said, patience, my wife came on and commented with all these hearts. I'm like, yeah, she's probably the most patient person in the world. She's married to me. So I wanted to shout out to my wife. I love you. Let me know if my daughter's taking her uh, driver's test today. Oh, wow. <laughs> I taught her manifestation. She, she was going to go wait in line. And somehow we got a phone call that they had an opening today. And she was just, uh, in cloud nine. Anyway, um, la last question real quick. All the things that you talk about in the compassion, consistency, connection, patience, all these different core values uh, that your foundation, you know, is built on, uh, the word faith comes to mind. You know, you got to have a lot of faith. C can you help us? Because I think, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs are on here. Uh, a lot of business people that are struggling right now. They're scared, you know, and I'm trying to teach faith in a broad sense, right? I, I, I know people have an understanding and, and they can attach whatever they want to that word, but I love to take people that have extreme faith like yourself. And if you could share with us what faith means to you or how you define it, or you know how you utilize faith in your life, any one of those, I'd love to end on that question. Yeah, well, let, let, me, let me open up my answer with that is that, you know, um, I'm no, I'm no um, stranger to lack of faith, okay? So um, without a doubt, every day it's tested and it's tried. Uh, and I think that's the beauty of things is that without it, we are lost. Um, but we also have to realize that the prerequisite to faith is hope, right? So hope is what our faith is built upon. If we didn't have that hope, then we won't have the foundation to have faith. Um, for me, on a day-to-day -day basis, I just, I've really tried to not get ahead of myself in, in the sense of trying to predict the future because I am not a psychic. I am not God. I don't know what the future holds. And I try not to live in the past. Um, and yes, I've learned from the past. Yes, I've made my mistakes from the past. And I am so accountable for those mistakes. I am not a perfect man at all. Uh, so I think it's very important for us to build our faith upon today, what we have available to, for us today, what we've built up to this point, and also look at where we've been to where we are in this current moment. And by doing that, that's where we can build our, put our, uh, our momentum in order to build for our future. Um, and, you know, and then, uh, you know, faith is all about trust, right? So, uh, yeah, well, it's awesome because the Fostering Success mission is about hope and which will lead to faith. And you're giving a platform of hope to a lot of people that can utilize it and, you know, can end up being the world's best at something just like you. And uh, what a great uh, icon and idol. Uh, and, you know, I always say these kids need to see it. You know, it's, it's especially foster kids and people, if you don't have something to see, it's hard to have hope. Uh, and what happens is once we see somebody doing something that we want to do, 
then we can go beyond it with our dreams. But a lot, a lot of times, if, if we don't have some, someone there to set a benchmark of something to beat, uh, as you know, in track and field, right? It makes it, and I'll, I'll use the four minute mile as an example, right? It, once you have that, now the imagination goes everywhere. It's one of my favorite stories that people don't know, but Roger Bannister at Oxford, he was told by doctors, scientists, that the human body could not run a four minute mile. And once he broke it, I think more extraordinary than him breaking the four minute mile was how many people broke it within weeks, right? Just to show you how hope connects to what we can see. And you're doing such a tremendous job to give so many people hope. Where can people find and support uh, the Fostering Success uh, mission? Yeah, you can, you can go right to my website, www.steviebee.com, S-T-E-V-I-E-Y, um, B.com. And, you know, it has all my links there. It has everything from what I'm doing social media wise or what I'm doing, you know, with Fostering Success, especially. Um, and how that's needing to be ramped up now that COVID's kind of like eh, settling a little bit here and there. We're getting little spots, but nothing really. So, but uh, it's still um, work in progress and things are coming along. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a project that's near and dear to my heart. Well, I appreciate you, man. Keep up the good work. Let me know how I can be of service. I definitely am in support of what you do. And thank you for providing so much hope and support so people can live faithful lives. I appreciate it. And good luck. And I'll see you I'll see you in Japan in a year. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for all you're doing, Dave. You got it, my brother. Take care. Thanks for joining me. No Stevie, Stephen Benedict, unbelievable athlete, but more importantly, humanitarian. Uh, Takeaway for the day for me, uh, I haven't thought about it, but hope is the prerequisite to faith. Hope is the motivator that converts into inspiration. Faith is the inspiration. So... Uh, let's make sure that we're crawling before we walk, before we run, uh, that we're able to provide hope for people and convert that into faith. Uh, that same way we convert motivation into inspiration. Uh, hope will get you up. Hope will get you back up. Hope will get you started. Hope will get you restarted. But faith will get you there. All right. But they can't get there unless they get up, get started, get restarted, get back up. Uh, and that's what my friend Stephen Benedict Dick does. And uh Perfect. Let's take a few questions as we finish up. Have you ever failed in your life? Oh my goodness. You obviously have not read my books. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. I fail every day. Uh, I don't call it failing. I learn lessons every day. Pain is an indicator that uh, I have a lesson to learn. It's just an indicator. Mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, physical, financial. Uh, every single day. Uh, I want to implement radical humility of what I don't know and how many things I am learning, which other people define as mistakes or failures. Uh, but every single day, what I want to do is not make it years, months, weeks, days, my hours, minutes. I just want to have moments of mistakes and failures and lessons. Uh, so everybody, let's take that perspective. You're not growing unless you are failing or having mistakes or lessons. If you're not learning, you're not growing. What do you say to someone who has two jobs and they're in college at the age of 20? I'm saying congratulations, send me your resume because you're somebody that must be what they can be. <laughs> you know, that's all I say is keep doing what you're doing. Enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential. Let's see what you do with that. What a great thing. Sorry for all the other people that are just in school partying. Sorry for all the people that just have one job. Congratulations, you are on the enjoyment of the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential. I can't see, can't wait to see what you can do. Go ahead, send me a resume. That's the kind of person I want. Uh, that's what I say to that 20 year old, keep it up, a 20 year old. What would you do if someone would hit on your wife right now? <laughs> if someone would hit on my wife right now, right now? <laughs> People hit on my wife all the time because she's so amazing. Um, and I would say thank you uh, that you see what I see in my wife. And uh, I wouldn't say thank you if my w w wife uh, reciprocated, <laughs> but uh, I'm not worried about that. That's her choice. Um, and But no, what a great compliment that would be, wouldn't it be, to somebody to see what I see? Because uh, she is gorgeous and beautiful and wonderful, the best wife ever. And I'm so grateful to have her. Not perfect, but perfect for me. All right. I hope that Danica Patrick and Aaron Rodgers will be doing a live video with their fans soon. Okay. Listen to me. Danica is going to probably be on with me Friday. So come on. Maybe I could have you join us or ask a question of Danica. So come Friday. 
Danica's going to be on. She's launching her new wine. We're going to do another playbook and maybe an IG Live. Uh, she's an extraordinary person, extraordinary entrepreneur. I know why we got the Danica Patrick fans here. Uh, but join me Friday uh, before training, 8 a.m. Training, by the way, BYOQ. Bring your own questions. I'll bring the answers. 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 949-298-2905. 949-298-2905. Email me, david at dmeltzer.com or dmeltzer.com forward slash training. Register, get free book, free guides, free training. Go ahead, join me, BYOQ. Bring your own questions. Also, I'm going to launch the two-minute drill uh, this month. Two-minute pitch drill. Join me. Go ahead. We're going to have an application. Uh, you're going to win free one-on-one -on -one coaching from me and some other things. Uh, but we're going to have a live competition, 949-298-2905. David at dmeltzer.com. Post that up there, Team David Meltzer. BYOQ, 11 a.m. Pacific. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take questions like this one right here. Do you think money buys happiness? There's your answer. Money doesn't buy happiness, but it allows you to shop. If you shop for the right things, it'll make you happy. If you shop for things you don't need, if you shop for things to impress people you don't like, it's not going to make you happy. But money is an ingredient in the mercury of my thermostat of life, which is happiness. It is not the thermostat itself. I used to define myself by my bank account. No longer I define myself by how I feel. And I'm trying to empower others to be happy, to be happy and empower others to be happy. Over a billion people will be happy in my lifetime. Collective consciousness of abundance and more than enough of happiness for everyone. I promise you, happy people don't get sick. Happy people don't attack other people. That's what we need is more happy people. I love to hear about hope and health and frequency. Can I speak? You can speak. Absolutely. Come join me. We'll get you on next time. Uh, come live with me. Come to my BYOQ. We're going to go and I'll answer your questions. Uh, Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific. It's free. What advice would you give to a 23-year-old? Be radically humble. Ask for help. Do you know anyone that can help me? Ask that question in person on the phone, via email, and media, radio, print, TV, social media. Keep asking people, do you know anyone that can help me with? Boom. Also provide value and service to others as you naturally will because giving is easy, receiving is hard. Do you know anyone that can help me? That's the questions that you should be asking. All righty, let's see here. Can you do some affirmations before you leave? Yes. I like the I am affirmations. I am grateful. I am healthy. I am happy. I am grateful. I am worthy. I am happy. I forgive myself. I am grateful. I am happy. I am healthy. These are great mantras. I am worthy. These are great mantras. I, I don't know what I don't know. I, I am more interested than interesting. I forgive myself. I am healthy. I am happy. I am grateful. I am happy. I am healthy. I am grateful. Uh, three of the biggest ones in the world. I am worthy. I forgive myself. I am more interested than interesting. These are great mantras for you before I leave. Last question, and then I am out of here. We're going to join me Friday, BYOQ. Bring your own questions. I'll bring the answers. Uh, how do you deliver value in times where face-to-face -face is limited? Face-to-face, -face, I did face-to-face -face with uh, Raleigh and Stephen today. Uh, so it's, I think, unlimited. Um, in person, face to face, you can deliver value. Uh, you have to know, number one, what your capabilities are, what skills do you have, what knowledge do you have, and what's your desire. And then you can provide value. You can provide value to others by helping them on the phone, via email via media, social media. You can help others by taking on projects that you can do virtually, remotely, if you're not face to face. But there's plenty of things to do. Do not limit yourself by considering you are limiting yourself. Uh, that was great. Anyway, thank you everyone so much. I want to remind you, BYOQ is Friday. Bring your own questions. 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time. It's free, 949-298-2905. David at dmeltzer.com. Free books, free training, free guides. Email me, text me. I am here to help. Got some great guests on here. Remember, hope is the prerequisite to faith. That's my takeaway to today. Check out Wasserman, the founder of Must Love Sports, Ray, Raleigh Gray, as well as Stephen Benedict, and he's a fostering success. The, uh, check them out. Thank you for joining me, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow, Friday especially. Bring your friends, families, associates. It's free. 
david at dmeltzer.com. Remember, as Raleigh confirmed, be kind to your future self and do good deeds.